I've got some notes. Um, I've been kind of journaling and reflecting and thinking about what I want for my business in 2024. Um, this is going to be a really, really big year for me. Um, this is my first year doing my art full time for the entire year, and I'm so excited. I just graduated from art school in December, and this past year, I've been working on my business a lot while I've been finishing up school. Over the summer, I really was committed to my art business full time, but now that this is my whole job for the whole year, I'm feeling so inspired and motivated and just ready to really do it and really commit and I'm feeling really confident about it. So I just wanted to share um, some of the goals that I have for the year, kind of where I'm at with my business right now, um, because I do want to make this like a full-time income. I don't necessarily make a full-time income right now, but based on what I was able to do last year doing it part-time, I'm feeling really good about it. So I want to be really transparent about what I'm doing to make this work for myself and what kind of progress I make throughout the year. So it just makes sense to start with my goals and where I'm at. This is not day one, but this is like day three of me being a full-time artist. So it's it feels amazing. Um, it's a little bit scary, but I'm just, I'm really excited and ready to share and ready to dive in. So to get us started, I want to tell you a little bit about where I'm at with my business right now. So I'm going to start with sort of my revenue breakdown and my business structure that I was using in 2023. So reminder, in 2023, I was a full-time student. Um, I was really just doing this on the side, um, taking commissions. I did a few markets um, and just trying to kind of get the word out about my work. Um, I started building an email list. I have about 75 people on my email list. Actually, I think it's exactly 75 because I just sent out an email the other day. And um, I get a little bit of like traffic to my website. Um, I don't really get um, like online orders. Um, I Most of my sales are going to come from commissions and markets. Every now and then I'll get a random sale from like someone I know like reaches out um, and like wants to wants to purchase something or I've gotten like a few um, sales on my website. So let me uh, pull up my revenue from last year and I can tell you a little bit about that. Okay, so I totaled up everything. I keep track of all my revenue for tax purposes and all that. Um, so my um, total revenue, so that's just everything that I had coming in um, was $5,320. Um, so obviously that's not a living wage. This is in USD. Um, $5,000 is not a living wage, but I think that it's a really big accomplishment for not being able to do it full time. Um, and I really only started during the summer. Um, so I feel really good about that number. Um, so $5,320 total, $3,617 of that was from commissions. So more than half of my revenue coming in is from commissions. I do consider that the main component of my business whenever it comes to what I actually make money from. And then from market sales, so that's um, my square transactions when I'm standing at a market talking to someone, $1,241. So the remainder um, is the money that I made that is not from commissions or from markets. So that's website sales and other just extra sales from like friends and family, people who reached out. And that was only $461. Um, so I will have to break down the percentages of this. Let's see. That'd be interesting to see. Okay. So for percentages of how I made my money this past year, um, my commissions were 68% of my total revenue. My market sales were 23% and that leaves the rest at about, 
9% uh, um, for the other random sales that I made. Um, so like I have always kind of known and said commissions are a main part of my business um, and that definitely shows in my revenue um, and I do want to continue that in 2024 um, but it's just something to keep in mind like I only have my commissions and my market sales basically and in 2024 I want to get get out of just having those two things and sort of um, expand more into being able to do more online sales um, doing some like workshops and like other small opportunities to continue to get the word out about my work um, but also do different kinds of things um, I do a lot of pet portraits and I love doing pet portraits I really do um, but I know that like it will be really fulfilling for me especially in the long term to do more different kinds of work and not just do pets every day for the rest of my life. Um, I think I will always do pet portraits because they really do make me so happy. Um, but just to challenge myself and get more variety in kind of my day and my work, my practice, um, it'll be good for me to branch out and do more kinds of commissions. So that is where we're at ending 2023. Okay. And if it sounds a little bit crazy, that I only made $5,000 doing this last year and I'm now taking it full time. I agree, okay, let me put this down. I understand, I agree. And basically it comes down to, I am in a very privileged position to be able to take my art full time. This is not something that anyone could do after only making $5,000 in a year. I am supported by my partner and we work together to make our family and our income and everything work. And because they've been supporting me while I've been in school, like we know that we can continue to live off of their salary. And we've decided as a team that it's worth it for me to try to make my business work full time for me. So I am able to commit my full time to my business before it's making me a full time income in hopes that it will. I And I truly believe that if I put the full time work into my business this year that I will make money and that I'll be able to continue doing this long term. Um, so I chose, we chose really, to instead of me getting a full-time job or a part-time job and pursuing this on the side, that I would commit full send to my art business. And I am so grateful for that opportunity because I know that this is not something that anyone could do. And I have to recognize that that is a privilege, accept it, and do everything I can to make it work for me and do my best. So that's kind of where we're at. And let me tell you about my goals for 2024. <laughs> so I split my goals up into three sort of sections, three main um, goals, um, three big ideas that I'm working toward this year. The first goal, make new work. The second is to make bigger and better commissions. And the third is about marketing and outreach. And I think these three things together are what's really going to help me grow my business in 2024. So let's break it down, starting with the first goal to make new work. Um, we all know this, that this is the first step. If you want to have a successful art business, you have to make the best work that you can. I haven't spent a ton of time making work for myself since the summer. And my work from the summer is great. I'll maybe we can put up some pictures, <laughs> some of the paintings that I made over the summer. Um, I loved that work. I sold pieces. I did markets with it. And I'm proud of those things that I made. But going into a new year and more markets and trying to put my work out there, I have learned a lot in the past six months. And 
I can make better work than that. I have new ideas and I have more things that I want to make. So I want to make sure that I am spending time this year, especially at the beginning of the year, making new work and doing the best that I can um, so I can show my skills and what I'm capable of as I'm doing my marketing and outreach, as I'm doing my bigger and better commissions, making bigger and better work just in general is going to get me those bigger and better commissions. Um, so one of the more detailed goals that I have pertaining to making new work um, is doing more still life and floral work. I love doing still life and floral. I took a painting class last year and we did still life after still life after still life and I loved it. I thrived. I'll show you some of my still life work. Looking at the like pieces, the glass and the flowers and the random little toys and stuff and rendering them with acrylic paint I'm good at it, I enjoy it, it makes me happy, and I want to bring that into my practice. So these still lifes are very academic, it's random stuff from the studio that we painted. I want to create some that are still life, but are more me. So I love vintage, I love craft, I love making things by hand and finding handmade goods, I love color and flowers and nature. And so what I want to do is set up my own still lifes that are representative of myself and my life and my values and paint those into some larger paintings. Um, and that is going to be the work that I am planning to kind of kick off the year with. And I'm really excited about it. Um, you know, being in art school, it's so much... Um, it's, it's concept focus. So it's very, what is this work about? What are you trying to say? What are you trying to do? Which tends to get you really far away from just painting things that you like and just making things that you like to make. And I really want to get back to that because for me to grow my business, for me to do this full time, I need to do what I love. And that is something that I'm drawn to. It's something that I love. And I know that other people are also drawn to it. Whenever I was posting these pictures of these still lifes that I was making in this class on my Instagram story, people are like, oh my gosh, that's so cool. Like people are interested in it. It's not just this weird little thing that I do. Um, so that's kind of the first things that I'm planning on looking at. Um, so my specific goal, <laughs> in terms of making new work is going to be to make 12 floral slash still life paintings. I want to specifically make 12 and make them fairly large scale because I would really like to, by the end of the year, create a calendar for 2025. I love artist calendars. I think they are beautiful and inspiring and I always want to buy them and I probably will buy some this year. And it also is a great goal to make 12. I'm hoping to make 12 by the middle of the year. So then I can start kind of formatting and planning how I'm going to get a calendar out. So by June, doing two a month um, through June. Um, also, then if I make 12 large scale paintings that I really love, those will come to markets with me. I could sell them. I could make prints of them. I could put them on stationery. Like that is work that I can share and sell and use to market myself. So that is value in in and of itself. And then the number of 12 would be really great as a goal to be able to make a calendar. I just think that'd be wonderful. If it doesn't work out, if I don't make a calendar, if I make 10 gorgeous large paintings and I sell some of them, I will be so happy and I will be just fine. But that is kind of my goal to make 12 make a calendar, and have 12 new paintings. So that is goal number one, make new work. Let's talk about goal number two. My second goal for this year is to find bigger and better commission opportunities. And um, this is going to be something that is really important for me as I try to grow my income because I make most of my money doing commissions and doing larger commissions is going to create 
more financial stability for me, more revenue in general. And it's going to be better for me than having a ton of turnarounds. So whenever I do $100 commissions, I would need to be doing $100 commissions like every single day to meet my financial goals. And that is not really feasible because of the time and effort that it takes to find a new person who wants to do a commission and talk to them and get it started and get that source of canvas and all of that. And it's worth doing for me. I don't mind doing hundred dollar commissions. Um, but for me to really grow my business and really make money doing this, I would really like to get more larger commissions and be able to offer both. Um, so that for people who I just happen to meet and want something small, it's fairly affordable. I know that a hundred dollars for a work of art is still an investment, but it's more feasible. Um, for more people, but there are also, I'm looking to getting more opportunities for those thousand, two thousand dollar commissions of a really large work of art for, you know, the middle of someone's living room, something that they will have and hang for like the rest of their life. Um, that is something that would be really rewarding for me that I would really enjoy um, and that I I definitely think that I am capable of and sort of qualified for. Um, so I need to kind of put myself in a position to be able to sell that work. Um, so for bigger and better commissions, I'm going to start with a big, beautiful commission that I am working on for my parents, um, which is going to be great practice for me. It's going to be a great example of my work to photograph. It'll give me a good idea of how long it takes me to make work this big because um, I don't work that big very often. Um, specifically, the piece that I'll be making for my parents is a three foot by four foot um, like sunset landscape. Um, this is a photo, I'll put up the photo reference. Um, this is a photo that they took while traveling that they really love. Um, and they took it actually on a friend's uh, property in Alabama. So last year for Christmas, um, I really, I think I made it over the summer, but um, as a Christmas gift for them to give to their friend whose property they were at, I did a uh, smallish piece of this. I think it was 16 by 20. Um, I'll put a picture of that too. Um, and they were able to give it to them and they loved it. And so now my parents want a larger one for their living room, really more like by their dining room table. Um, so I am going to be doing a three foot by four foot like portrait set up. Um, of sort of the center of this, take out the trees on the side. And my mom asked that I lighten it up a little bit from what I had painted um, for their friends. So I kind of edited the photo a little bit and this is kind of what we're going for. I'll put the picture up. So doing that first commission, hopefully getting that done in January and getting an idea of what that looks like, taking pictures of me working on it, filming the process, taking pictures of it, in their home set up so that I can show people I can make work this big that could be a forever piece for you. And, you know, as I go to markets and more people find my website and are on my email list, um, I could hopefully get more clients that want work like that. Um, another thing that I would like to do to get bigger and better commissions um, is just doing more example commissions. Over the summer, I did um, sample commissions of pet portrait. Um, so I would like to um, do some sample commissions of wedding flowers, travel photos, and house portraits. Um, I love florals, of course, I talked about, and I would really love to be able to do um, floral paintings of people's wedding flowers. I think that would be a really beautiful thing for someone to, you know, buy a large piece and then have it, you know, in their home, in their living room or whatever. And it's a picture of their wedding flowers. Um, I think that is a really nice idea. And I'd like to kind of present that as an option. Um, I might paint my own wedding flowers for my wedding in 2020. Um, Travel photos is going to be like that big sunset, but also I have pictures from Germany, just like things that are like architecture and mountains and like vineyards, um, stuff like that, that people have 
gorgeous photos of um, that would be really nice as a large painting in their home. Another thing that I think would be nice to do is house portraits. I've done a few really small house portraits before, like a few years back. Um, my mom is a realtor. I've done some small pieces for her for like clients and friends. And I think that that is a good way to do smaller commissions. Um, so I want to kind of play with that idea of doing like eight by 10, um, like house portraits, maybe even doing a little bit of a more abstract, like getting the lines of the house right, but kind of making it more brushworky um, so that that could be one of my like $100 commission options. I think that could be really nice. But yeah, that is sort of my plan for bigger and better commissions. Let's talk about goal number three. So my third and final goal is all about marketing and outreach. And what that means for me is just getting my work out there. I think that I make good work. And in order to sell that work, people need to see it. <laughs> and I would love to get more commissioned clients. And really part of what that is about, and a, like a big part of what I need to do to make that happen, is putting my work in front of more people. So um, what I'm doing for that, um, a monthly email newsletter. This is something that I started over the summer that I've kept up with. I skipped December. It ended up being really crazy because I had finals. I was graduating at the beginning of December, but I've sent out my January newsletter. Um, and I sent out that newsletter and that day two people responded to me, like asking me about my work. You know, those people who are on my newsletter are interested in buying my work want to know what I'm up to. My friends who get my newsletter will like text me and be like, oh my gosh, your newsletter makes me so happy. Like I love getting it at the beginning of the month. It's fun. It reminds people that I exist, that I'm making work. It updates people who are interested, people who I met at a market once and joined my newsletter. Then they continue to remember who I am, even if they're maybe not active on social media, so that they could purchase from me at some point. Because usually those people who sign up for my newsletter at a market. Um, well, let me explain kind of, so there's two ways to sign up for my newsletter. Basically, if you go to my website, it pops up with, Hey, join my newsletter. And you can put in your email there. I also have a physical newsletter sign up at my markets. So if people are looking around, they like my work, they're talking to me, they're asking me about commissions, I will say, hey, sign up for my newsletter. I just send one out once a month. Then you'll kind of know what I'm up to, what other markets I'm doing and stuff like that. Um, so those people who are interested in my work, who talk to me, but maybe aren't able to purchase at that time, get on my newsletter. And then maybe at some point, whenever they need a gift for someone or they are like in a good place to be able to purchase or they see something that they like even more than they saw at the market, um, can purchase then. So that newsletter is really important. It's more targeted and specific than like making a post on social media. For the most part, a lot of people will see it like that day or the next day. Um, and my email newsletter, the way it's structured, you can just respond to the email and I'll get an email back. So I, um, sent my newsletter saying, I graduated, I'm doing this full time now, I'm really looking forward to 2024, like, I'm looking for more opportunities. I got emails back saying, congratulations on your graduation, I'm so proud of you. I got an email back saying, would you be interested in um, donating to a um, silent auction in February? I got an email back saying, Hi, I remember talking to you about doing workshops. Are you still interested? Like that would not have happened from a social media post. So that email newsletter is really, really important for artists. Um, and I'm really proud of myself for setting that up during the summer because it is so much easier now because I have it formatted and everything and I know how to do it. At the beginning of the month, I just go in, change all the text, add in photos from the month, you know, put in my events and stuff and send it off and it's super easy. Okay, I talked a lot about the email newsletter, but that is super important for marketing and outreach. Um, but another thing that I have is doing more markets. Um, so I've mentioned several times throughout the video that I do markets and meet people. 
I don't necessarily make a ton of money from the markets that I do. I have been fortunate enough to like, I usually do make like plenty to cover, you know, the cost of my booth set up, like paying myself for the day, you know, that kind of thing. But it's not a huge source of revenue for me, those sales that I make at markets. Um, but getting those people on my newsletter um, is really important. And I think that's really valuable, meeting people face to face, showing people my work in person, because acrylic paintings are textured, and nuanced, like seeing the work in person is really valuable. Um, also, getting commissions from people that I don't know. I have only done that through markets. I have not ever gotten, well, some really small ones I have done commissions from people who I only know from like social media, but getting commissions from people I don't know personally, it's going to be the people who I meet at markets. So I want to continue doing markets um, to meet new people, get new clients, introduce people to my work, and also selling the smaller things. I love doing stickers, small paintings. I want to do more prints of my work in the future. And I think whenever I have more really good options like that, I will make more money at markets too. Um, so that is going to be an important part of my marketing and outreach, but also my revenue. Um, another goal that I have for marketing and outreach. So this is kind of, this might seem kind of silly, but one of my goals for this year is to make sure that I am like being a generally social person. <laughs> and I think this is really important for independent artists, anyone who works for themselves, by themselves at their home. Um, it's important to get out and be social. <laughs> um, it's important for my mental health, but it's also important for my business because I want to keep meeting new people. I want to keep, you know, getting new ideas and meeting artists and being part of the community. So what being social looks like to me, especially whenever it comes to being social in ways that are valuable to my art practice, um, I'll be volunteering um, at an organization called Spare Parts in town that I really like. Spare Parts is a, a creative reuse center. So it's kind of like a thrift store for arts and crafts supplies. You can donate unwanted arts and crafts supplies and they resell it super cheap to the community and it's a nonprofit. So it's sustainable, it's arts, it's, it's like everything that I love. <laughs> and um, I have gotten to know a little bit um, some of the people who work for them. I'm hoping to do workshops for them in the future. So doing some semi-regular volunteering with them, which really is just helping them sort donations, helping them price things, um, stuff like that. I get to talk to other people who are interested in what I'm interested in um, and just get a little bit more experience and get out of my house and, you know, that kind of thing. Um, another thing that I'm doing in terms of being social <laughs> um, is I like other hobbies that I have, like I really enjoy reading. So I'm looking at doing some in-town book clubs, um, which again, it's like, it just extends your network. It's like a way to make friends, meet clients, and just get more inspiration and input for your practice than just what you can get, you know, being here, you know, I can get a lot of inspiration and interaction through you know, social media or stuff like that. But that in-person real interaction through a different kind of hobby, um, I think is going to be really good for my mental health um, and just my life. <laughs> um, so that's part of that too. I'm doing some in-person book clubs. There are some places in town that do like craft nights. Um, I am a big knitter. You probably know that if you are subscribed to my channel. Um, I do a lot of knitting as well as painting, um, and my local yarn store does knit nights. So going to that to meet other knitters in the community, there's a bookstore in town that does a craft night once a month. So going to that, um, I went once recently and met a bunch of other knitters in town, which is so cool because usually I see knitters online, but not a ton in person. Um, so 
yeah, it's kind of part of marketing and outreach. It's kind of part of just mental health and like making the idea of working for myself from home, like making that work long term. I need to have like a plan to be social. <laughs> um, let's see. Let's see. So another thing that has to do with marketing and outreach is just saying yes to a bit more um, opportunities. Um, so I don't want to be someone who says yes to anything and everything, especially whenever it comes to commissions. I need to be able to say no to commissions that don't align with my practice. Something that's going to stress me out, something that will not add to my portfolio that I'd feel weird about sharing, um, you know, stuff like that. I need to be okay with saying no to those kinds of things. What I mean by saying yes to more things is doing small workshops, um, donating to um, like auctions and fundraisers, maybe doing more like smaller um, markets, and especially at the beginning of the year, you know, trying to get my work out there by saying yes to more things is going to be really good. Um, Marketing and outreach. Um, another part of that is creating YouTube videos like I'm doing right now. I want to commit more fully to my YouTube channel in 2024. Um, I had a lot of fun with it over the summer. I made a lot of videos over the summer and then in the fall with my semester, there was just no way that I was going to be able to make quality YouTube videos while finishing up my semester and my degree. But I am back now. I am ready for more. I have a new setup. You, I don't know, maybe my footage looks a bit nicer. I've got a camera. I've got lights. I need a little like wireless microphone thing. I think that'd be good for my audio. Um, shouldn't be too bad today because my house is very quiet today. But like I'm going to get a little microphone. I got the lights. Um, it's going to be great. Okay. Um, I'm really committed to my YouTube channel and I think that making good YouTube videos is going to be good for um, my like online sales of smaller things. Something that I like to do um, to support like creators that I find on Instagram, YouTube is I'll buy like stickers. Like I'd love to buy more like small prints and stuff like that. And um, that could be good for me if my YouTube channel does grow a lot. Um, to be able to sell more of those smaller things to people that I find on here. Um, but also just have more people kind of like see my work, have that community and social aspect and share some of what I know and what I love with the community and people all around the world. I think that it's so cool. So I'm really proud of myself for putting myself out there and like doing the YouTube thing. Um, I think that it's really cool and it's one of my goals to just keep it up, keep doing it. <laughs> Um, let's see. Oh yeah, I kind of had written here, like, it's not necessarily a goal to monetize my channel. Like, even if that doesn't happen for years, I think that this is still worth doing. And I think it's important if you are starting a YouTube channel to not go into it thinking you're going to make money from your YouTube channel. Um, because you will get frustrated because you probably won't for like a long time. Um, yeah, definitely no like goals or plans to monetize my YouTube channel or have sponsored videos or anything like that in 2024. Um, but just putting more quality content out there and having more people, um, you know, interact with it and talk to me and getting really good at making these videos. That's kind of my YouTube goal for 2024. Um, yeah, and then one other thing that's it's kind of um, marketing and outreach um, is making more and kind of related to the YouTube thing um, is making more stickers and small products. So that is going to like I talk about making bigger and better commissions. What's going to be really important for me, I think, to grow my revenue is whenever I meet people at markets, whenever people come across my work, you know, online or they meet me, having a really full range of products and ways that people can support me. Um, a lot of people who I meet at markets, they are like, oh, I love your work. It's so nice to meet you. Like, let me give you my money. But they obviously are not just like, oh, let me buy a $300 painting. Um, people will buy stickers, small prints, stuff like that. And I think having a really, like a more full range 
of stickers and prints as well as just making new ones because the prints that I have are from the summer before this past summer. Um, well, that's not, not all of them, but like some of my prints and stuff that I'm selling at markets like, you know, right now are like a year and a half, two years old. I'd like to refresh it to where they reflect um, my newer work, like making prints of these still lifes that I'm going to make hopefully really soon. Um, and having a really cohesive, not necessarily like a super like branded thing, um, but just having work that is all really reflective of myself, my values and my practice. Um, and that I'm really proud of all of the work that is in my booth or that is on my online shop. Um, that is really important to me. Um, yeah, so that's about it for marketing and outreach. I know that one was a bit longer. I had kind of thought originally about it being um, marketing and outreach, but also creating more revenue sources, but there was a lot of overlap. Um, so I kind of condensed it into like marketing outreach and like having more things to sell in my shop. Um, yeah, so I, uh, that's all that I have for my notes. That is the plan, really. Um, it's 2024. Today is January 4th. So we are just getting started. This is my first like work week as an independent artist. I've done a lot this week. It's been really great. <laughs> um, but yeah, that is my plan for success in 2024. I'm hoping to do some like check-ins to kind of see um, what I'm able to accomplish and how. I know that these goals will shift and change as the year goes on. Um, so I'm hoping to do some like check-ins. Um, I really appreciate whenever people are really transparent about their um, revenue sources and the money that they're making from their art. So I'm going to try to do that too. Um, not in like a clickbaity way, um, but in a transparency way for people who are generally interested in myself and my work. So keep an eye out for that. Um, and that's about it. Um, I'm probably going to have another video coming out pretty soon too. Um, definitely a knitting video and, um, I'm working on, I'm working on a video right now of my full pet portrait commission process this little guy back here. It's a work in progress. This is spooky. Um, I'm filming the entire process of painting that pet portrait um, so that I can kind of do a video where I walk you through my personal process and some of my thoughts behind my pricing and, you know, everything that kind of goes into my pet portrait commissions, I'm kind of walking through that. So if that is something you're interested in and you are not subscribed, subscribe now. If you are an independent artist too, I'm wishing you a successful 2024. I hope that your 2023 wraps up beautifully and I will see you in the next one.